welcome all to our fourth chapter of three stocks we are having this uh, um, three stocks on every last friday of a month and then uh, there we invite some speakers who are having a lot of practicing experience through this and uh, it is not a presentation kind of a like a session we are expecting of course uh, to set the tone there would be a few slides which uh, mr uh, sachin joshi would be explaining and then later we want you all to be interactive and uh, just have all the discussions and try to get uh, more and more about uh, this just for uh, at the beginning itself um, uh, sachin sir i would like to bring to your notice that all these uh, participants are not experts in this many of them would have been just uh, knowing what uh, this is or probably even not that so please uh, set your uh, <laughs> deliberation based upon this input without wasting time i would like to introduce uh, mr sachin he is a professional with extensive experience in technology aggregation product development application development sanitation organic waste processing metallurgical processes and analysis outdoor education behavioral science organizational development and startup management while i'm reading this i don't see any of the field which are not uh, untouched from his uh, like magical uh, um, this innovative knowledge and he loves to explore evaluate and the best fit of different materials technologies application to solve very local level real problem statements he tries to figure out contradictions to resolve to find out best possible solutions through frugal innovations he he has his um, uh, like uh, he's a co-founder of ecom ecom eco uh, solutions private limited which is uh, started 6 years ago Uh, before that he worked with crompton greaves consumer electricals limited wherein he started with as a head specialty product sell then head industrial design center and later he was dgm of technology before that he also have uh, an experience as a marketing manager in a uh, high places management private limited uh, by education he is an engineer uh, and uh, did his mba from one of the most reputed institute that is jamnanal bajaj institute of management studies so without taking much of your time i would uh, straight away hand over the uh, dais to or the session to mr sachin uh, sachin it's all yours thank you professor uh, so uh, good afternoon good morning good evening uh, i mean whatever time we are uh, currently in i know people are joining from different parts of the country and uh, that's how uh, i would like to start as a greeting thank you professor for giving an extensive uh, rewind of my entire uh, professional as well as personal journey because yeah i mean most of our uh, careers are well streamlined i suppose but uh, mine was bit scattered so i started as a uh, love towards engineering did a lot of uh, work in uh, in production engineering mechanical engineering tried studying technique systems and then quickly jumped into outdoors as a hobby and that became profession that's why uh, you see a large amount of different parts of disconnects uh, in my professional life uh, but ultimately in some part of each professional life i gathered something which is more useful in my next uh, version of the profession so that's how i am uh, laid out in the professional life as well as personal life uh, they are not much different they are all uh, mixed mixed up with many problems which i keep on encountering and uh, somehow that's how i laid the entire subject today as why i love tris because tris doesn't give you only one solution and it doesn't allow you to look at only one solution so uh, that's how i would uh, start the talk as such uh, here i would not get into tris as a technology i'm not getting into the techniques and tools used in uh, tris but rather i would like to put it in the other form where how did i encounter my problems and how did i look at each solution i come across and try to envisage how tris helped me because this is a 
this is a thought process which is built by Trez in me. That is what I will say, and that's how I thank Trez. Uh, it doesn't come very structured manner, maybe at times, but uh, the structure is at the back of the mind, and it pushes you to think in that manner. To give you a quick uh, background of Acom Eco Solutions, uh, this is a sustainable sanitation solution company. Uh, Uttam Banerji and I, uh, we started this initiative, rather Uttam started this in IIT Delhi as a research project and uh, later it got converted into a, into a professional uh, career for both of us because no one was ready to look at it uh, in the scientific manner. So we decided to do it ourselves. We can't uh, depend on someone else to uh, to nurture our own baby, right? So that's how we only took up nurturance of this uh, entire organization ourselves. So ACOM is basically working in waterless unional, which is which you can look at the left side of this current slide. The top uh, portion diagonally, what you see here is basically the composting solution for food waste. The entire range of bottles here you look at are not me to uh, cleaning solutions. They are toilet cleaner, floor cleaners and stuff like that, but they are completely bacterial. We don't say our uh, solutions kill 99.95% bacteria, but we call them bacterial. So they have bacteria in it. Who uh, works for you at your home? So I'm not here for a marketing session. So uh, that's it about ACOM. Uh, I'll directly jump into uh, how I look at trace. I mean, the first question, whenever a problem comes is obviously how can I solve this problem? But then uh, it starts taking me back towards where do I look at to solve this problem? Uh, is there a solution already available of this problem? When I say this problem, Triz again pushes me further back saying this is not the typical problem. For example, if I am looking at uh, a simple problem that a bottle, uh, a cap of the bottle is not opening, the, the cap opening is not the problem. Why it is getting stuck up and how other things which are stuck up are resolved is what we have to think of. And then that gives you a solution which can be then applied to your current problem. So generalizing a problem and taking back the solution from that generalizing is what Trace makes me think of. Uh, then obviously I also think of why do I have a problem? Uh, have I done something wrong? Uh, in the process of product development uh, or maybe in the, in the process of system development or in the process of entire organizational system setup, there's something which is wrong. That's why I have a problem. And if I resolve that, can I solve this problem? So there is always an answer already available for your problems. You have to just look at them differently. That's how uh, we begin. So my first career path uh, took me the first engineering career path took me to uh, engineering company. This is my, I'll say, first or second year in Crompton Greaves. And uh, obviously, being an R&D person, I was thrown some problems towards me uh, for resolving. And at the initial stage, when you're junior, you're given a bit easier problem to resolve so that you can grow in the system, you can grow in the uh, knowledge, as well as you grow in the understanding of the entire uh, organizational needs. So the first problem which was given to me was uh, reduce the weight of motors. Now the highest weight of the motor is obviously the rotor and the and uh, and core of the motor, which is uh, copper, steel, etc. And being magnetic material, you cannot change that. So the easiest path I took obviously because this was not known to me and I was struggling with solving the problems. I immediately look at what is the next level of uh, weight in a motor is obviously the shell and the, uh, and the cover, the two end covers and the shell, which are made out of aluminum. Uh, now they are made out of aluminum, but that point of time it was, it used to be made out of cast iron or steel, right? So that was making a second highest weight of the entire motor. And how can I resolve it? Obvious answer was, uh, why not we make lighter material as strong as steel? And then we took up a, pro a project called as aluminum as strong as steel. So we tried uh, making aluminum as strong as steel. Uh, we did not 100% succeed. We did not 100% fail. 
but it was very easy path to take and it was not a way of thinking by trace manner you just have you are just thinking linearly you are just looking at okay i want a lighter uh, product i i want a lighter metal i can think of lighter shell because that's the second highest uh, phenomenon obviously i uh, i gave a hierarchy to the weight and obviously the second highest was body and the shell and that could have been so you to reduce the density by almost six times uh steel is to alum the obviously the weight the of the aluminum reduces but then the functional uh, problems get aggravated with these kind of solutions similarly we also wanted having lighter components uh for a heavier machinery like transformer right now in transformer i cannot think of aluminum one obviously for the cost but second we also wanted that to be a magnetic metal right so then we immediately thought of immediate solution and that is again not a trace way of thinking right we felt innovative as a r&d person but we never felt a trace person i never felt like a trace person because we immediately said we will reduce the density of steel as if we are god and uh, we also thought of uh, increasing the strength of steel there are methods of increasing strength of the steel by alloying them but then you are compromising with their uh, rollability malleability and stuff like that so you encounter other problems so it's not simple way of thinking by trace method because i am not looking at it in a versatile solution or pattern that is my first take my first way of encounter with trace and compton itself introduced me to trace uh, trace association of asia was invited as consultant with us and uh, narayan sri and the entire team came to us and we started learning trace right after immediately learning trace we were trying to apply those techniques right so the first physics again the olden days taught us look at the physics you are asked to reduce weight reduce density uh, increase strength simple solution uh, when we applied the trace methodology trace thought process this was the first project i did this was the fan which we were asked to design and this fan was asked to design to give a certain ad ad is air delivery now air delivery is directly proportional to speed and hence if you look at uh, olden days over a period of time crompton bajaj uh, uh, anchor philips whatever whomsoever was uh, the manufacturer of ceiling fans was increasing the speed of fan so that you can get more and more air delivery and the more and more air delivery was giving you another problem of noise one second you are compromising with safety because there are three three sharp blades rolling on your head at that speed if any of the mechanical device mechanical member of the entire fan snaps off it is a life threatening situation so there is a limitation of speed with ceiling fans we were somewhere around 320 340 we went to 375 then the fan started coming at 420 and people started giving it uh, names like avancer or some some high speed uh, terminology as a name but my team uh, at that point of time we were looking at this entire scenario we tried to envisage by tris uh, thought process that why can't air be delivered more when the speed is less who delivers more air when his speed is less the the few of the components few of the natural components one of the very star component came across was uh, this bird uh, everyone identifies this bird right anyone can anyone can give a answer if if you can is it a seagull yeah that's a seagull the seagull is a uh, is a bird which flaps the least amount of times and flies the largest amount of distance so uh, primarily it is not a uh, aeronautical phenomena but it is a phenomena by which the geometry and the method of 
design of its wing is such that in one stroke it it gives you the strength or the air blow uh, for that bird for a larger distance. So we tried understanding the geometry, the anatomy of this bird. So seagull, this is the right side. Uh, you see this fan was first fan, which was giving the air delivery equivalent to the air delivery of 375 RPM uh, ceiling fan. And uh, that, that too at a speed of less than 310 RPM. Now, this was first attempt of our application of trace thinking. I am nowhere again and again using a methodology or terminology of techniques. Okay. So there is there is no specific technique which I am referring here, but this is how uh, trace tries to uh, help you out in looking at something more diversified and bring it back to the solution. This fan ultimately was given a name as Siegel. And I think if you if you search on Google, possibly this might, might be available on uh, on Amazon or Flipkart or somewhere. I don't know. Uh, hello, someone asking something? Hi, Andre. Single plate by the way. Means single plate. Hello. Uh, One case, sir, I am not able to hear. Someone is asking yeah, something. Even, even I am not able to listen. It's very feeble sound. Uh, I request you to please put it in chat. Till then, you can go ahead, sir. Okay, fine. So this was the first endpoint. Then uh, we were also given another task of looking at uh, something which will cool as well as heat, something which I want to cool uh, as well as heat whenever I want. And uh, we were struggling to resolve this problem. So uh, when I looked at something called as uh, Peltair, I've, I mean, this was again technical uh, solution, but this was being used by military uh, in many places in a very small manner. So uh, we decided to look at that as a method of cooling and heating when desired. And this man, which he's wearing is called as a Peltire jacket. This jacket cools when there is a uh, reverse polarity and it heats from inside. So the, the side which is heating becomes cooling. The side which is cooling becomes heating when you reverse the polarity. So that's why I, uh, with that pun intended, I say you are you are hot. I mean you are looking hot from outside, but cool inside, and can reverse the effect whenever you want. So if you are going from Rajasthan as a soldier to Siachen Glacier, initially he wants himself to be cooled from inside, and in the Siachen Glacier he wants to be heated from inside, and the uh, cool effect has to be outside. So this is what we also used in many of the appliances. Uh, design specifically for personal appliance design, a tabletop fan kind of thing, where heating and cooling is reversible. Again, this came with a uh, with a trace mentality thought process in product development, and uh, that gave us a huge advantage over uh, over the the AC. Uh, I mean, air conditioning cycle. We cannot put an air conditioner end of a cycle in a small fan which is a table fan, which is a personal fan. And, uh, but still we used this filter and that gave us a huge amount of effect because the cool fan was giving air to the user. The hot side was away from the person and we could design that fan. That fan did not uh, take the, I mean, look uh, at the light of the day. We never launched that product, but uh, because it was very niche market product and, and the company didn't want it to do that. But as a successful development, this was another uh, encounter with with contradiction and a combination of reverse effects that can be brought in using a trace methodology. Similarly, we were also working on geysers. Now, geysers, you know, uh, initially uh, hot water for breathing was being uh, uh, was being done by using using the fire, and you were heating the vessel 
and then the vessel was heating the water. So the center portion in the entire image, you can see that uh, as a as a diagram. So conventional heating process, but where you heat it using wood or fire on gas or something, the pan is on the on the on the fire, and then the pan gets heated and the water gets heated. Uh, the same methodology was always used with geysers. Okay, uh, initially they used to be immersion type of geysers. Then they became the wall mount, wall hung geysers where the heater was submerged uh, in the water and the water was heated directly instead of the pan getting heated. Then we decided to look at more efficient method of heating. We didn't want it this pan in between to get heated. So first we looked at uh, there is a there is a process in trees where you you have an evolution model where the the entire evolution of method happens. So indirect heating became the first prominent method of heating. And there we started thinking of induction heating. The right side image shows you the induction heating where induction of heat happens because of the magnetic waves. Magnetic waves heat the specific region of the pan. It doesn't heat the entire pan. In the conventional heating, the entire pan was getting heated. Here, it was only the base of the pan getting heated and the water was getting heated from there. So it was more efficient. Then we also thought of microwave. Now, uh, these products, the induction heating uh, geysers have come into the market recently. This, this was happening about six, seven, eight years back. So the development cycle time is too large. Uh, while microwave got dropped out because of the safety factor. But look at the microwave methodology. It doesn't heat anything. It directly heats the substance because of the high frequency uh, modules. And that doesn't heat the pan. You can touch the glass pan when you are taking out the food from a microwave oven. Similarly, we were thinking of putting microwave as a heating methodology for geysers. Now this, this is not just benchmarking as a technique. This is looking at the available solutions somewhere else and bringing them back to your application by applying the uh, methods by trimming, by uh, field analysis and stuff like that. Uh, this, this was somewhere around 2015-16 and then I jumped into a sanitation business because uh, I thought I will be more uh, doing a social work than commercial work and that's my uh, way of looking at life. So then we thought of doing something more meaningful. Now uh, I'm just showing a picture here. What do you see here? It's a funnel. It's a funnel for filling, uh, I mean, filling liquid. But why can't we look at similar things for something more meaningful application? When we say men can stand anywhere and pee, why can't women stand and pee? They can, but how? So we tried to uh, envisage that as a method of creating a stand and pee tool or a technique for women who can use that. I'm sorry for showing these kind of images. If someone is getting offended, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm not meaning any uh, I mean, shameful act here, but uh, this is what is a real solution. What is in market today? Uh, many uh, companies are using it. There is a big company called as Peabody who has already done this commercially. We were part of development of this uh, sanitation uh, methodology for women uh, who face a lot of problems uh, while they are traveling and other places where there is a huge UTI uh, coming into picture. The urinary tract infection because of direct body contact with the unclean pans and unclean uh, places, right? So this is another way of looking uh, product development using a trace methodology. This was very fast development, which happened because we applied the entire trace methodology in this development. So this is a device called as uh, urinal cone. Similarly, there are there are developments happening for the pads, to tampons, to reusable cups in female sanitation to save them from the uh, harmful effects of dirty sanitation in India till now after so many years of Swajh Bharat mission. 
right so this is this is generalizing of the statement we are trying to prevent leakages by external internal and reusable uh, products now i am coming to my core product which is zero door now zero door is also a, a product which is related to urinals i am just giving you three slides which are used for resolving this problem but there was a huge amount of other work which i had already presented in trizex asia but uh, in 21 uh, december 21 but this is a very small part of it because today there is very uh, small time amount available with us so uh, looking at a system we don't look at it as a part interaction now tris makes you think of looking at it from the tris uh, methodology of looking at it as an interaction between each part of it. So when I look at men, men's urinal, there is a urinal pot, right? Which, which acts on urine. There is a jali, which acts on water. There is a foreign matter. There is a drain plug. There is a bottle trap. There is exit pipe. And each of this is being interacting with urine, water, human, air, gravity, ammonia. Now, why I'm doing this, basically, I am trying to avoid the smell generated in urinal, especially where there is a commercial place or a large amount of football is there. And I am facing a lot of problem of ammonia generation, which is a very smelly gas, especially in urinals. So otherwise, I wouldn't have looked at it at this kind of interaction, right? Similarly, we also look at uh, different parts of uh, composting, organic composting, uh, sewage composting, sewage treatment. So try to imitate from nature, medical industry, space industry, aviation industry. One of such solution in sanitation, which we found out, I jumped from engineering to sanitation very quickly. Just because of the time limit, I didn't uh, went through other uh, places. Sorry for that, but I'm just taking it one by one where I have on through the trace methodology. This is the top portion of the entire image shows you a, a picture what indicates how bacteria basically digest the food in your stomach. This is got called as gut bacteria. What they do is uh, they break down the food components and your and pathogen resistance is created by these bacteria. Rest all the functions are of the of your gut of absorbing what they have broken down so they break down the food into carbohydrates or proteins or minerals and stuff like that which is absorbable into the stomach so when we thought of or when we were thrown off of a problem called as composting we always uh, went back to understand why not we do what our stomach does outside our stomach and that's how bacterial composting is being devised. It's not today. Composting process is being uh, there from the in the nature as well as manual composting processes are there for, for far long period of time. We only optimized it at our level. What ACOM today does is 27 days process of composting by bacterial group but it is completely aerobic process. When you bring in air, bacteria, and the organic waste, segregated organic waste in proper moisture content manner, it gets accelerated. The composting gets accelerated and the quality of compost output is also very fast. Similarly, these, uh, these bacteria can also be applied in sewage treatment. So in sewage also, there is organic waste which is being discharged by human beings. If we add certain types of bacteria, instead of putting caustic acids, alkalis into our uh, toilet tanks, they break down the entire waste, water, waste in the water, the solid waste in the water, and convert it into nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, and salts. Your output of the entire sewage system will become much cleaner than what we are doing today with the rivers and sea. Currently, so this is what is again taken out from the nature. The solution is already available, generated by, uh, designed by the nature. We didn't do it. We only copied it. We only copied it in a typical 
for a typical problem statement. So that's composting and microbial sewage water treatment. Now, uh, very specific zero door design. We did a waterless urinal product as a design. This product is designed based on uh, two basic uh, system analysis where water actually, so you might not be able to see the text here. Urine uh, interacts with water and the urea in the urine becomes ammonia. So we have to deal with these two systems, S1 and S2, by introducing a third system in between, which will stop ammonia from coming back to the washroom, but allow the water to go down the drain. That is one analysis. So urine reacts with water to dilute urea and urine in urine and form ammonia. So this was the problem statement identified in the entire system. Similarly, uh, there is another uh, technique where you can introduce a sacrificial system, S3, for devising something and reducing this interaction between the water and uh, urea in the uh, urine. So that's called a cis application for how to eliminate key disadvantages. Unit urine converts to ammonia, which is a harmful function. Right? This is very technical TRIS process. I know there are non-TRIS people also present here, but this is very simple to understand. There are three uh, systems: system one, system two, and a function which is chemical. So we are trying to avoid the interaction between S1 and S2 by introducing a third substance, either sacrificial or non-sacrificial. That's it. Don't get into the technology the tool as such here. So there were two, three methods. One is creating a YouTube mechanism so that gas doesn't come inside the urine. So what was the contradiction here? Contradiction was basically water should not stop. Water should go down the drain, but the gases generated under the drain should not come back to the urine, urinal. So it is very reverse uh, moment of anything. So gas is lighter. It tries to tends to come up. Urine is heavier. Density is higher. It tends to go down. So I am allowing the water to go down, but gas is not to come up. And that's the contradiction which we uh, try to solve in this. Second method was creating a no-go plug. I am just showing a balloon here because it indicates that it is always deflated. If I put this balloon in a urinal drain point, it will be always deflated. Whenever urine comes down, it will inflate and then again deflate so that the gases generated will not come back. That's another method of creating a membrane in between. Then also, these are the bacterial bioblocks, which can be created by, uh, uh, I mean, making a block out of bacterial cultures, and that's a sacrificial substance. So as I said, one and either non-sacrificial or a sacrificial sub substance. The block will uh, dilute. The urea will not get converted into ammonia because of these bacteria, because they interact with this urea, convert it into non-soluble particles, and the ammonia is not generated. So that's how odor is eliminated out of urine. And the ultimate solution, what we design, is uh, very quickly shown as an animation here. So this assume this is a drain plug of a urinal pan. There is a float wall inside. So when someone urinates from top, the urine goes down the drain. The float wall floats on the urine itself. After the urine goes down, it locks the port and then it blocks the gases. So that's how we designed Zerodor, the mechanical uh, product as a waterless urinal for men. Uh, you can get all the details on our website. Uh, I have shared my website and uh, mail address on the last slide, maybe. Or you can get it from Professor Vankeri, uh, and I will be happy to resolve your queries. This is an overall picture of how process happens. As I said, there is a drain plug here. Urine goes down, and the gases are blocked because of the because of this float wall. That's about zero dot. Uh, so that's about uh, my interaction, my fight with different problems using the TRIS methodology. Uh, over to you, Professor, uh, and the team. Uh, you can ask any questions. What I may answer, I will surely answer.
Here Professor, participants, uh, please feel free to ask questions. You can just unmute yourself. And just in case you find some problem with your microphone, then uh, you can put it in chat. We are here to read it out. Okay, till the time some other question pops up, I would like to ask you, like, uh, how would you, uh, sorry, sorry, there is a question. There are, there are questions in the chat box as a yeah, question. Yeah, 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 I'll read them for you. Chat box. Being a design veteran, how do you solve the problem of speed demanded by business to be innovative? How do you manage it? <laughs> Speed demanded by the business and how do you manage? It is very tough question, sir. Uh, very, uh, very specific question uh, related to the. Uh, the demands given by the business as a startup uh, entrepreneur, uh, I would answer it in a manner where. It's a big struggle between the manpower and uh, demand supply uh, side because the the products which we are currently dealing in are not completely easily accepted uh, by the industry. So the first and the foremost thing for any entrepreneur who's working in a very innovative uh, product domain or non-conventional product domain is not the speed but to make the market accept you as a as an identity as a knowledgeable person in that field and uh, then the speed is not a question of uh, much management it it happens easily because demand supply uh, solution is not very uh, difficult to solve creating demand uh, for that solution is a bigger challenge for you. that's what i look at it i don't know whether i answered the question suresh Yes, of course, and uh, we know now the product which you are having is not having not only even a single competitor, but uh, there is no other quotation also required for you. Because generally there is all government or all the organizations uh, expect at least 3 quotations, but in your case, only single quotation is enough for that. So I think <laughs> it is a complete monopoly as well. And that but is actually India, the India is very, very easily. Uh, I mean, uh, another side to it is. India, China, other countries where once you establish something, you get easily copied. You also have to keep on uh, keep on migrating from one solution to the higher level uh, innovation in it, so that you protect your uniqueness. True. So there are a few more innovations which you have done. If you can just uh, throw some light on that. Uh, I mean, innovations, I'll not call them innovations. It happened. I mean, many of my innovations, or many of my, uh, design interactions are accidentally because I just wanted to do something new and, uh, it happened to come across my way. So, uh, we did a, uh, we did a innovative problem solving in Gizar arena. When I was in Compton Greaves, there was only one method of protecting the geyser, the MS tanks of geyser, uh, that was the glass lining of that tank. We decided to work on nanotechnology to protect that tank uh, along with a polymer coating, and which is much cheaper and much lesser in terms of carbon footprint because you know glass lining takes a lot of heat. So it is about 1440 degrees Celsius or uh, 500 degrees Celsius kind of process, whereas polymer coating is hardly uh, 200 degrees Celsius uh, process. So that's one of the innovation I, which I remember as a, as a very benchmark innovation, which got uh, national award uh, to Crompton Greaves uh, and happened to be uh, still usable in the, in the industry. 
at the same time, obviously in sustainable sanitation solutions, we did a lot of innovation in sewage treatment. We did a lot of work in uh, Namami Gange, where we are trying to treat the streams of small rivulets, which are contributing water to the main stream of Ganga. And that is called as in situ uh, rejuvenation of water. And that, that depends each of the process is new because you are doing it at different location. The demography is different. The atmosphere is different. The, the temperatures and the flora fauna is different at each location. You will have to do the entire study of that stream itself and then do the uh, rejuvenation of that uh, stream. So those are the things which we are doing and daily we are encountering some or the other problem in sanitation. So looking forward to see the Shuddha Ganga very soon. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's all goes to Narendra Modi. <laughs> uh, one more uh, question is there from Mr. Harsh Gangan. And uh, yes. he is asking like, can you please mention a few places where zero door product is installed and is uh, functional as well? Oh, uh, I can take few names. Uh, where are you based out of, sir? Pune. So, uh, in Pune, we have installed zero door in uh, DHL in Sakhan. We have done it in ICICI bank, uh, HDFC, sorry, not HDFC, uh, DCB bank. Then we have also have done it in one of the INOX. Uh, I, in, uh, if I'm not wrong, there is one mall called as Heritage Mall in Pune. Pavilion or Heritage? If you are familiar. Familiar with Heritage Mall. Okay. So there is Inox in Heritage Mall. We have done uh, waterless urinal installation in Inox there. Rather, we are doing a lot of uh, installations for Inox across India. And I think it is also in PCMC building. Municipal Corporation. No. Uh, Pune Municipal Corporation, it was in the old building. Recently, I think they renovated the toilets. So possibly you might not see them. They must have broken it down, but you can see, I mean, if you give me a right time and a date, I will arrange a visit for you along with my Pune person so that you can actually see the locations. At least one or two, we can uh, obviously take permission from the client and show. Okay. Uh, till the time other question pops up, I have a query like, uh, how do you look at the running cost of this? Because now there is a lot of saving of water and maybe a few things like those carcinogenous uh, uh, deodorants and all which we put over there. So that are reduced, but what about some kind of maintenance or initial in, uh, investment, what is to be done? Can you throw some light? Uh, as a, I mean, as a pun intended, I will say there is a huge amount of uh, investment required for maintaining zero door. But if you are not doing it now of your existing uh, existing toilets, then only this is the additional cost. Otherwise, if you have one manpower for cleaning and maintenance of your existing toilet blocks, then there is no additional uh, cost in, uh, required to be done. Why I'm saying so, I'll just elaborate. Waterless urinal stops flushing water. At the same time, when the urine is falling in the pan, the urine also falls uh, or I mean goes on the floor or goes on the walls by accident at some times, but that causes a problem. So you have to have a mopping cycle of two to three hours. In two to three hours, once the floor of the toilet has to get mopped, there has to be a proper uh, maintenance of your exhaust fans. This is These are the two basic requirements for zero door to work perfect. Zero door doesn't demand any additional cost on apart from cleaning and maintenance. Okay, so that are there uh, otherwise also because uh, it also falls. That's why I said it is a very, very uh, light note. I'm saying it is a huge cost because people tend to say that if you are not asking for, clean, I mean, if you don't have cleaning and maintenance staff, I generally say don't install any zero door or don't install anything. That is good as it is. But of course, for sustainability, saving so much of water is a big boom. Yeah, certainly. So oh, there is a comment from Mr. Malinson that uh, it is a great value, and he is thanking you. Thank you, sir. 
So still we have uh, next nine minute available an expert, Mr. Sachin. So those who have got any query, please feel free to ask. Hello, okay, Sadeep, I'll sir. come to one of my favorite questions, Sachin. How do you yes. think that it should be taken to the academics, particularly the students, their project, their learning? Because most of the time it is found that uh, students get very good marks. But when we uh, like uh, go through the basic knowledge or the understanding, uh, there is something problem because most of them still resort to those uh, uh, mugging kind of uh, uh, doing the academics and education. So, what would be your uh, like uh, suggestions on that? Uh, sir, I would I would rather go away from trees as a uh, subject here. I would rather go to a design of the entire educational system where, especially when you are talking about engineering or any professional stream. I am not just talking of engineering. There has to be a sandwich pattern. Uh, we slowly discarded that sandwich pattern methodology. First, it went out of mechanical, then it went out of production. Basically, the students have to get the hands-on experience on the real-life problems. They are doing projects on theoretical basis. When they are not doing the, I mean, practical problems, they will not need any technique tool like this because uh, in their day-to-day -day life, uh, professors like you who teach this as a technique in the routine study itself, it will get applied to even their daily uh, problems at home. And it may or may not have relation with engineering or medical or anything. So TRIZ is a way of thinking, again I am saying, because it gives you a uh, unnoticed method of thinking. So obviously TRIZ as a professional teaching tool can help students in resolving their day-to-day -day problems, but first thing they have to uh, approach the entire entire uh, problems as practical problems, not theoretical problems. Look at the real problems in life, take very small problems and try to resolve it. That's my take, sir. Right, right. And it's really very Sir, Heman, sir, has some yeah, problem. Yeah, some yeah. yeah. Yes, it's not a problem. I just, uh, uh, I'm just curious about it. Now, uh, you are from a fan industry and what I, I see everywhere is a split AC and a fan, yes. two yes. separately uh, fitted in a room. Split yes. AC also has a fan. Why yes. can't the split AC uh, sit behind the fan so that both integrated into one? Yes. It is right. you know, feature transfer. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I don't know whether this is a question that I can answer, but uh, ceiling fan uh, or any fan, rather a wall mount fan and uh, air conditioner, uh, indoor unit, because you are talking about split AC. Yes. Uh, have a bit of uh, disconnect in terms of the functionality. Okay. Air conditioner conditions the air, but it doesn't circulate. Very frankly, air conditioners are not designed. The small split air conditioners are not designed for after looking at the geometry of the room. Precisely, they, that they is my to, point. Right. And hence you need additionally the fan to circulate that cool air to each nook and corner of the room. If you can design a modular air conditioner, which will have multiple ports outlet, which can be installed in each corner of the room, instead of putting one single indoor unit, because your compressor, I mean, all the air conditioner is outside your home. Your indoor unit only has a fan and a filter. Very frankly, it doesn't have a condenser coil or anything. So you can always split that into multiple small ports, which will be fitted in different. What will increase is the amount of pipeline. Yes, I don't know whether there are air conditioner people here, they will hit me. I don't know. Uh... But uh, the air conditioner people need to think about it because somebody is going to do this sooner rather than later. It has to be. It has to be done because nowadays uh, the designs of every room, not just residential, you look at the commercial places, 
obviously commercial places have the centralized ACs and ducting and other things. So they have done it there. Yes. They have taken the inlet and outlet at each every uh, nook and corner of the room. But that has not happened for uh, home ACs. Unless and you have a centralized room. Actually, there are multiple problems that we see around, you know. Uh, one of my favorite problems is air conditioned helmet. The yeah. helmet <laughs> by itself should the helmet by itself should cool the air because there is an air flowing, uh, 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 there is a breeze uh, uh, flowing there and the and uh, the, hair, the head has uh, sweat which uh, can be evaporated and uh, the latent heat can cool the head. Now how do we yes. design the helmet out there? There are multiple, as you said, uh, that uh, the students should see uh, problems all around us. Now I am 70 yes. years old, but I am seeing all these problems around us. We should solve this problem. If you are if you are experimenting, uh, try one Peltire module, buy one Peltire module, which costs you thousand rupees maybe, and attach with a cell in your helmet and see if you can Peltire do something. Uh, you know, uh, I'm the, uh, uh, I don't agree with that. You know, because any attachment is a deadly uh, projectile when there is an accident. The primary, you know, Peltire some... is very small chip. Okay, I don't. But I've seen some. Uh, attachments to the helmet. No, 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 no. not helmet not. Those, are, not they are deadly projectiles when there is an accident. Yeah, yeah. this was a lighter node. You'll have to cut a square piece out of your helmet and put a Peltire module and attach one nine volt cell to it, and it will cool your head. That that wow. that's sure. <laughs> wow, thank you, Madhuj. That's really interesting. Uh, one more question: Like cleaning has migrated from using chemicals to using bioorganisms, enzymes, etc. What is yeah. the thinking in the industry for sustainable cleaning? Uh, so, the industry uh, uses, uh, again, Mr. Suresh, uh, the industry doesn't look at the cleaning solutions from its composition point of view because till now, whenever I went for meetings, I have asked them whether they ever tried to look at the composition on the blue bottle of their toilet cleaner. And I have never got an answer yes. They always said, no, we never thought of what is there inside. It is cleaning my toilet and that's it. And it is cleaning my toilet at the cheapest cost. Right? So now when green building certifications imposing fines of uh, not getting points and not getting the green, uh, I mean, uh, the platinum and gold ratings, then people have started thinking of all these things in composition of cleaning solutions. Otherwise, uh, till now, Indian mentality was uh, towards cost effectiveness rather than the uh, composition of the thing, because ultimately it is going down the drain. The first answer which we got till now always is after it gets down my drain, it's not my responsibility. It is municipality's responsibility to clean it. Yeah, there are other problem solving techniques like why, why analysis, DMAIC and other. How TRIS help you differently to break down problems still to reach the solution? Manthan, uh, Manthan, uh, very uh, rightly you have pointed out, but all these methods of why, why, DMAIC, Six Sigma, and so on and so forth. I have gone through each of them because all my corporate life, I have gone through more of the training programs than I attended my classes in the educational uh, career. So uh, I have had a small taste of each of them, but I have never got a feeling of what TRIS gives you of holistic lookout of looking at a problem. Uh, very simply, I'll put it, you look at the problem in a 3D manner when you are trying to solve it by TRIS methodology and when you are, you are doing YY or DMAIC kind of uh, methodologies, you are looking at the problem either from one perspective or the other, but you don't look at at the same time from three perspectives. That's that's how I feel. It is more personal answer to you maybe uh, than a real technical problem, uh, not a problem, a real answer, but this is what I feel. You don't look at I mean, when I say, when I look at sewage treatment problem, I look at where it is already solved. At the same time, I look at the technicalities of it. When I, then I do the function analysis, then I do 
So I do multiple things to solve same one problem. I don't directly jump to the solution. I take it to the higher level uh, where this problem doesn't remain as itself. It loses its identity. It makes more generic problem and then find the problem solution at that generic level and then bring it back to this. That is the difference between trees and the other people. Yeah, that is really a very great answer. And in fact, Amanthan, we do use uh, all the tools, whatever we have said, along with this. So this is not like a, a competition of uh, what is better and what is not. Uh, this gives you a different way of thinking, different way of creating. And these tools helps us out to optimize it further. So we are at the end of uh, time and uh, so if there are some more questions, definitely we'll be able to please pass it on through our email or maybe WhatsApp and uh, we'll pass it on to Mr. Sachin and on his behalf, I promise that he'll give all the answers. So uh, thank you uh, Sachin for uh, spending your time. I know you are traveling still, uh, you made yourself uh, available and uh, all the participants join all across the world. So have a great day ahead. See you soon, like next uh, month's last Friday, again, we'll be meeting with the, another expert on that. Stay tuned. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. I have put the Thank links you. and my email ID uh, in the chat box. You can yeah. put me the details there and I will Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Now I'll close the meeting. Thanks for being with us.